Fran says, hey, Tyler, how would you structure a TV season, one hour drama using the story circle? Big, big circle for the overall story, plus one circle per episode, one circle per act, four acts, so on and so on. Okay. Yeah, so I can definitely talk about this. Just cleaning up my whiteboard here. Okay. All right. So if you're going to do a thinking about like a TV series based on story circles, um, I'm going to try to make this not super complicated. So you can obviously have a whole big, huge circle for the whole story, but when you're initially starting, it's unlikely you're going to know exactly where you're going to end up five seasons in the future, right? That's just really not how it works usually. So I think it's way better to think about it season by season. So season one, this is your story circle for the entire season one. So you're saying, okay, who is my, who's my protagonist? Who, who is the story going to be about m the most? What is their big season level want? right? What's the huge inciting incident for this first season that's going to really send everything in motion? What is the midpoint where they get, they fulfill this two on some level? And then what's the huge problem that occurs because of that? And then in the end, what's the final big choice that they're going to have to make to ultimately change? That can help to give you some big broad strokes ideas on where key moments in your story is go are going to happen. So you can say, okay, well, if I have like an eight to 10 C eight to 10 episode season, then you can say, okay, well, episode one will likely handle these things, you know, uh, episodes in the middle will likely handle here. Like if it, it, this can always be different. I mean, even if you had 30 episodes in a season, which never happens, but even if you did, you just say, okay, then the middle episodes, like 15, would be here, right? So if you have eight, then four would be here, and 10, five would be here. So you can think about it like that, where no matter how many episodes you have, you can say, okay, you'll have the inciting incident. This one is kind of tricky because this will likely happen, like these three can likely happen episode one. Not always, but a lot of times, like to get us started, we're going to see the big inciting incident, episode one. We're going to see who our character is, episode one. So we're going to see that initial two, episode one. Then we essentially have the four, which will be episodes all the way to the halfway point of your season. Up to the halfway point. Then this is our halfway point where we get our midpoint for the season. And then our huge turn, which you could also add that this this can potentially be the midpoint episode and then when you where you have the gap here is when you kind of get into this side this is where it can get tricky and where people can get mixed up one way to think about this is to say that you take the six here and you shove it down there and you say okay look this is one big huge big turning point and then you essentially have another four because remember the four is an adapt. The four is taking ap action. Uh, well, which is the seven. So it's essentially you're extending the seven down here. And then ultimately, well, okay, that was confusing. Let me, let me explain this again. Okay, when you have this big pivotal problem that occurs at the six, which is gonna be at the halfway point in the story, if you're mid big midpoint shift, story is gonna go kind of down here, right? We're, this is where we're back in a setup zone. So this is a, this is set up and then we have payoff slash climax, right? The midpoint, the halfway point of your story is the first climactic big point in your season. And then over here, now we're back into setup, right? We've had this huge midpoint that's happened, changed everything. Now the character, they could only see this far, right? A lot of times your character is going to have a want that takes them all the way to the five, but it can't take them further because they don't, they can't see past that. But what happens is then this big six happens 
and now they're in a whole new world. Some huge problem has shattered their whole plans, exact, shattered everything they thought was going to happen, and now we're in the second half of the story. Therefore, getting another zone of setup. And then we get our final payoff and climax up here. Um, so that's a way to think about it. Now, let's say you have eight episodes. You could easily, you start with circles and then you have a one circle per episode. But then you can, this is where things can fractal down. And you can say, okay, well, I want to, you know, stories are two halves, right? As I showed, set up, pay off, set up, pay off, right? They have this flow, set up, pay off, set up, pay off. They're, they're their own two sides. So you can take any two sides of a story circle and then make them smaller and make them smaller and make them smaller all the way to where you're story circling your scenes out. That's something that you can do. Generally, I wouldn't do all of that, that mess unless, like I would do that only when you're stuck. Right. And I would keep it mainly to definitely do your big story circles for the episodes. And then I also would recommend doing at least if it's a half hour or excuse me, hour long drama or something like that, do kind of a first half of the story up to the midpoint and then second half of the story up to the climax. And you can story circle out those two sides. And I think if you're doing that, you will be in pretty good shape.